Hello, everybody, and welcome to a bonus episode of the MinMax Show podcast, a place about games, friends, and getting better. I'm Ben Hansen, joined by Kyle Hilliard. And then we have Zelda! Suriel Vasquez! It's a me! And Jana Garcia! Hey, what's up? Welcome! Welcome, everybody! Uh, This is all about the big Nintendo Direct that just happened this morning. If you're listening to this after the fact, we are... We are still buzzing from the Nintendo Direct. This thing just happened. This is a bonus episode of the podcast. You can always subscribe to the audio version of the MinMax Show podcast if you want these in a more convenient way. We'd appreciate it. And we'll have a regular episode uh, coming up later this week as well for even more fun E3 mop-up. But holy lord. All right. Um, Janet and Kyle, you two weren't on our reaction streams. Um, Janet, let's see... What's the best way to express this? How are you feeling about the Nintendo Direct? I was trying to think if there's some sort of facial expression thing or some... Through all your reactions, yeah. Some pitch of your voice you could maybe emit to, like, convey your excitement about this one. Hmm. Okay, Ooh. so that's like, oh, it was good, but also it wasn't, like, mind-blowingly good to me, but I think, like, the Metroid thing is just so strong. Um, obviously, yeah. Breath of the Wild 2 uh, is also a, a cool play, especially with... 2022, not too far out. Um, they did say, what What was it? They they had that one wording that I'm like, I don't know if they're going to hit this. Is it anticipating something with like... I think it was one... that they're working on a new Zelda game. Makes me think that they won't hit 2022. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, sorry, too- I'm sorry to like like pull the rug out from under you, but I'm, a, I'm like 100% expectations exceeded. Like best yeah. Nintendo E3 in a while. I like, am 100% with Metroid. I think that can be true and Breath still not be that too. much that impressive. Janet, this I, is what's I, mind-boggling. I was, is like the idea Advanced that like, Wars, like so many genuine surprises for things I wanted. Like I was really uh, maybe, and maybe it was because my expectations were so low. Yeah, that like it really was like honestly like one of my favorites in a while. I think like all around, Microsoft still had a great show. But in terms of stuff that was out of the blue for me and actually got me really excited, like this is the star of the show. Yeah, for all of E3 for me was this was this direct. I thought it was so so strong and so fun throughout it. And you can go back and check the reaction stream if you want to hear Serial Vasquez squeal squeal like a <laughs> stuffed pig when Advance Wars came up on that screen. Do stuffed pigs squeal? I oh think yeah, oh they love they squeal. They're non living. So you poke it with like a. <laughs> Like something. It's unclear, but uh, like a dead pig, yeah, that's like right. a stuck pig. It's that's like my, you, that was you, yeah. pig. If you were to stab a pig, it'd be the same as making another advance war. Is it just that you're, I don't know, such a big Splatoon oh, fan? You're disappointed by that? Oh yeah, I, real quick. I just before I just want to tell Janet one yeah. thing that Serial has said to us is that he pig. literally thinks about Advance Wars every day and has thought about it every day <laughs> for true. since the game released. That so seems like, healthy, yeah. I think. <laughs> I mean, they, they got it out of the way today for me, right? They thought about Advance Wars. What are you going to think? What are you going to do with that mind space now that it's opened up for you? I don't know. I, I'll think about other things. It's going to be weird. I mean, it's okay, let's, let's jump into this. Yeah. This is Advance Wars 1 plus 2. They're taking Tony Hawk's naming convention. Uh, do a 1 plus 2. Um, and so Advance Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp is mm-hmm. the name of this thing. Serial is the world's yeah. number one Advance Wars fan. What'd you think? Uh, I think it I think it looks great. Uh, there are, I think watching that trailer again, there's a couple things that I think I'm not totally sold on how the art style animates. I think it looks nice, but I think there's something about the movements that looks very like we have to have them moving all the time that looks a little bit weird. Um, and I listened to the kind of remastered version of Andy's theme, which is the song they play in the trailer. Okay. And I'm not totally into it. But maybe <laughs> oh, my God. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the, the rest of the soundtrack is a lot better. But putting that stuff aside, I think this is like as good of a job as they could have done, I think, in terms of I, I think the art style looks really strong. I think it. one of the things that I like about it is that it looks like um, like if you had rendered it as a board game, sort of where it's like, here's these really high-res models of something that's very kind of chibi. Yeah. Um, they look really nice. Uh, and so, like, you, you could see kind of this being, like, if they made it, like I said, an Advanced Wars board game. Like, I looked at the tiles and stuff, and it looks very, like, okay, here's kind of, like, an icon of a mountain, right? Like, it's not, it doesn't look like, okay, we're, we tried to render, like, a real 3D mountain, which I think would have been weird for that franchise. So I like the art style overall. I like the, I, I like the way, like, the, the stills and stuff look. Um, and so, like, the, the, as far as the remake it goes, I think this is 
probably as good as they could have done. I think obviously my favorite is the third one, the the DS one. Oh, okay. uh, that one would have probably taken a lot more work to throw in there. Uh, I could see them like down the line saying like the the campaign from Dual Strike is like DLC. It's like that's like mm. the season pass thing because there's a bunch of other stuff in in Dual Strike that would have probably not fit this remake. But yeah, I'm really excited about it. Like I I I want to play that game. <laughs> Yeah, Reboot Camp, and they have a Nintendo Treehouse Live where they think they're going to be showing off a ton more gameplay, but also coming up this December. Like, it is yeah. crazy how it's like, oh, all of 2021, like, like, kind of fell in line here from Nintendo's point of view in a really nice way. Um, so, yeah, look forward to that one. Uh, Janet, what do you think was the most exciting thing for you? What are you that most excited? the Metroid thing. Is the Metroid. The Metroid thing was so fire, and it's, it's coming out this year, and it's coming out pretty soon, and it's, like, a new thing. Like, you know, yes, Light Shade to Advance Wars. Like, for me, I've never played Advance Wars, so it'll be my first time playing it. Yeah. But, like, my, you know, with these conferences, I've said this a couple times, like, it's always going to land on what your personal tastes are, and if something speaks to you, like, you know, Surreal's mind has been so flooded with Advance Wars that the new opening of it, like, I can't imagine having that feeling because there's not a, a game worm that lives within me like right, that, you right. know? But, like, that's very cool, and I, I think that's why you do need diversity in titles. But for me, a lot of the stuff that was cool felt, like, kind of dated. Like, it gave me a little bit of a little bit of washed energy. Like, I don't know. Um, like, even the Super Mario stuff, Party stuff, which I love Mario Party. I think the old ones are the best ones. I'm going to buy that game. I'm going to have fun with that game. But it's like, all right, an old Mario Party, and we're doing something with Super Monkey Ball, which is a game I was all right with and i like i never played warrior wear and it's like i know everyone says it's good so i'm gonna get it but it doesn't oh. show really incredibly if you've never played it i'll be honest you need to so experience it's like, okay, old, old 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 breath of the wild 2022 hopefully that's what that's how i that's how i left feeling to be okay honest. okay I still think it's a pretty strong showcase i would give it like a b i think it's very competitive with microsoft just because metroid was such a banger and bot w2 i mean they said 2022 i have to accept that because that is what <laughs> they said to. Even though I don't, if I had to bet, I would say it would be 23, but that's what they're aiming for. They also showed more of it, too, which I think is really key uh, to make it stand out. So, yeah, you only really need one or two bangers. I just feel like the rest of it was a little muted for me. Like, sure. if this was a regular Tuesday, I wouldn't have been surprised. Like, it didn't feel like the only E3 feeling I got was Metroid and Breath of the Wild. OK, well, well, let's dive into let's dive into the biggie there. One of the biggies, Metroid Dread which it blows my mind that they called it that. I mean, this is like the equivalent of long them. rumored long. Yes. Teased. It's yeah. like if they made a new chrono game and called it chrono break, it's just like, Oh, like that thing that I thought for sure was just like a code name from freaking 15 years ago. It is just mind boggling that no, no, we're making a new 2d Metroid for the switch and we're just going to call it Metroid dread. And then the Never producer, give up hope. I, I guess that's the lesson, yeah. The producer in like uh, the beginning of the Treehouse stream in a little behind the scenes thing, he talked about that, yeah, they were working on Metroid Dread 15 years ago and it didn't quite work out. And then they said it had a second shot and it didn't quite work out. But now this time around with Mercury Steam, the Spanish developer who also worked on the Metroid 2 remake at the helm again, they're making a new 2D Metroid. Everybody rejoice. Nobody has anything to complain about anymore in the rest of the world yeah. I, I mean know. quick quick sidebar on mercury steam like really i really feel strongly like an underrated developer like i really like mercury steam a lot i think lords of shadow is fantastic i think samus returns is fantastic but they like weirdly have not had this like explosive hit and i'm like hopeful that this one can like elevate them some more i, I was very happy to see that they were developing it like it, that was that was a like that was my first question when i saw it come on screen i was like is mercury steam doing this one because i, I yeah. want them to you know yeah and as uh serial pointed out in our reaction stream they're the rare developer that's worked on metroid and castlevania oh yeah that's <laughs> they're the metroid that's developer uh, serial i'm stealing words directly out of your mouth yeah, I, I watched more of the presentation and I I think this is like a prey 2017 situation where I don't think it has a ton to do with the previous efforts to make that title. I just think they they just stumbled onto a concept that where this title fit because the big thing is the Emmys, right? Like the these robots that are constantly stalking you and that as far as I know, I don't think you can really kill. It, it's almost like they're just adding like Mr. X creatures to the Metroid universe. Well, I was confused about that. So in the treehouse, it shows Samus goes and gets an Omega Blaster, and it seems like she's able to take out one of the Emmys with that, right? But then yeah. you lose the but Omega like, Blaster? 
So it might just be like here, like, you know, the equivalent of like a nuclear bomb is the only thing that can kill this thing. And so you have a very limited number of them. And so you just have to like this. It effectively works as a key of like once you have this key, you can get rid of one of them, uh, which I think is a pretty cool mechanic. Uh, but otherwise, you have to like go into stealth mode or just avoid them entirely, which I think is is pretty cool. Uh, and I think the, the being able to kill them actually kind of counters the idea of like, OK, I don't want to be annoyed by these things when I'm backtracking. So it's like eventually you'll clear this area out. But maybe, you know, your first time through an area, it's going to be like the kind of, OK, I don't want to explore too much because I could run into one of these people, one of the Emmys. Um, but once I come back, maybe I'll have one of these things and I can just kill this thing and then move on. And like, you know, right. do my regular exploration, yes, which so I think it, is a really cool idea. Yeah. So I wonder if like the thing that's been carrying through for the last 15 years, however long they've been toying with this idea is just that idea of, yeah, dread of just making more of like a suspenseful Metroid where you're going to be hunted by these robot creatures. My thought initially was thinking of the alien inspirations for the game since right. the beginning. And the xenomorph tracking p people through the ship, you know, this like unkillable monster. And then, you know, like Alien Isolation kind of toyed with that idea a lot. And I think and I wonder if that's an extension of that still continuing to look at that, that um, you know, that xenomorph inspiration, you know? Yeah, there's a lot. I think Fusion, I think, is going to be a surprisingly kind of important title for this because it's the sequel to that. It's effectively the sequel to that game. Right. right? Uh, Samus is wearing the armor at from Fusion, effect, like a, a like a redone version of that armor. Um, and the fusion had a little bit of that alien ele uh, element because like the reason you were in that fusion suit was because like a, an alien life form had taken over your regular suit. And so, and they was way more powerful than you. So like there would be moments where like that creature would come onto the screen and you just had to like hide. And, but it was all basically a cutscene where it's like, okay, you need to stop what you're doing, watch it walk across this area and then keep going. Uh, so it is building, it feels like it's building on that. They also mentioned that this was going to be the conclusion of Samus's arc with the Metroids. <laughs> right. Which is an interesting way to like just kind of, which is a weird capper. I think this is maybe them being like, okay, in case anybody thought there were any loose threads let's, and wants us to make another Metroid after this, we can just say like, well, you know, we concluded the saga of Samus. Metroid Prime Boy. 4 out next year or whatever. Like, uh, <laughs> it's such a weird, re yeah. I don't think anybody was too captivated by the Metroid timeline, but. Well, God, okay. Help me out, people watching us live with the backstage pass. That Metroid timeline, I'm always confused about. Does anybody here know where does Metroid Prime fit again? Where is 4 seemingly well, Prime, taking place? Prime is a prequel, I believe. Okay. Prime is, I think, is between Metroid and Super Metroid? No, okay. it's after yeah, we Super do need Metroid. Help the chat, then. I think I'm going to say that Super no one knows. <laughs> It's, it's I feel like a the, murky mess. I feel like the timelines, even when they are official, y'all remember that official Zelda timeline? Right. What kind of lie book was that? Like, it was just <laughs> insulting. Yeah. I'm like, but this doesn't, they're like, you know what? It was like that, you know, that Rihanna gif of her throwing the money into that guy's face. It was like that, like Zelda timeline here. <laughs> this is what it is. And I'm like, yeah, I don't I, think this, they're like, we're not taking questions. <laughs> and I reached into the air and grabbed every one of those bills and laid them out on a table and studied oh, them comprehensively. Yeah. You have oh, to. Oh, yeah. Uh, chat uh, says that, yeah, Prime was, Prime is the first. Uh, Prime okay, is, Prime is the beginning yeah. of the entire saga. But yeah, it was interesting just how they... It's how they, well, yeah, but it's, it's interesting how they like they pitch this because they're very much like, okay, it's the first new Metroid story in 19 years, which I'm still trying to figure out, wait, how does that work with Prime wait. then? That doesn't work out. Why were they saying that? And Other that? M. Other M is a sequel to Super Metroid. Like This is what they were saying is the continuation of the first yeah. new story in 19 <laughs> years, but that does get really yeah, that, murky. Maybe well, 2D. I mean, I think it as much. Like, I think Other M is just done. I think no one, Other M doesn't count anymore. I think. Yeah, I, I think that's really the only thing they're alluding to. I think, I want to say, Metroid Prime was like, what, 2002? I think. Yeah, but then Metroid Prime 3 was so much after that. And that was well, still I think they're probably considering like the, the Prime is like one story that started in oh, there. Yeah. So maybe they're just like, that's that's one thing that started whenever. But this is like the new original one in 19 years. Or the, maybe they or put the, it in the right show and they're like, you know what? Close to, they don't check these dates. It's close enough. They don't get the sense yeah. of it. Or like, what's the most efficient way to say? Last time. They couldn't say long ass time. So they were just like, oh, 20 years. I think it's like maybe it's like the continuation of the story in sure. 19 years. Yeah, that's, it's after. that's what it seemed that like. Seems it, like it would have to be. Sense. Right, right. Um, but then, it so makes sense. It made me laugh. It, oh, it absolutely makes sense. But it made me laugh then when the producer is like, 
Okay, yeah, it's been uh, 19 years since we've continued this story. Uh, it's a great place to jump in. Here's what you need to know. Here's what a Metroid is. Like, he, they were very much starting from that square one, which I guess you have to at the Metroid franchise for this era of Nintendo of being like, okay, everybody, there are these things called Metroids. And 2D Metroid games, there's going to be a lot of exploring. Here's why exploring's fun. Like, it, God bless them for trying to haul a new generation of people up this hill to appreciate Metroid. But it's amazing just to see how yeah. they position that. And for what it's worth, my daughter was severely uninterested. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Just just have her give it a chance. If she comes in with an open mind and an open heart, like I I like Metroid Fusion is one of my favorite games ever. Um, and that being said, I do barely remember it because I was a literal child when I played it. But, sure. So don't don't at me with like, oh, did you like the blah blah with the blah? I'm not gonna remember. I just remember, but I remember the feeling of playing it and how cool like you know, the suit alien stuff was and the design and just sitting there. Like it was such a good time. And I've wanted to re-experience that for so long, but, and this is, this is that, but it's a new thing, which to me is like the perfect blend. So yeah, I've, I, I am so excited. And I'm also someone that doesn't have like a strong history with, you know, non 2d Metroid, just because I played a little bit of prime on the GameCube when, you know, it came out at the time because we had it, but I was really not into first person perspective. Which I know sounds like a weird ass take, but keep in mind I was a I was a kid, so I, right, it, was, it right. wasn't like I wasn't thinking like, oh, but I'm missing out on all these experience. I was like, I'm gonna play what I like, and I don't know, it's first person, it feels kind of shooty. I don't like the the I'm not used to seeing this way, um, so I, I didn't spend a lot of time with it. But the 2D ones, um, I absolutely adored, and this just looks so cool. I love the design of the the creature the lighting was really striking to me the yeah. atmosphere with like the fog like it had a lot of these nice touches like i feel like sometimes when we revisit these sort of old you know if you want to call this a series or sub series within metroid like you start to play like like i felt this when we i played some Ratchet and clank 2 where when i was playing it i'm like this felt like what they thought i was playing when i was a kid right or it felt like this is what it was meant to be yeah. and that's the vibe i get looking at this and that's what's so exciting to me yeah the the environments are interesting so the way they explained in the treehouse is that like instead of slowly descending into a planet to explore this time around you're starting at the core of a planet and then samus is trying to work her way out for freedom that's like the evolution of the game it's it's basically inside yeah or not inside you don't want to know what happens at the end (laughs) uh but like it's weird to see so many like mechanical environments i guess like kyle or cereal do you have thoughts just on like the the environment design that we've seen so far yeah, I think it, I mean, it, it is kind of like you see an update to a, a classic game like that, and it's hard not to escape the, like, well, like, the retro graphics are more evocative because you can kind of fill in the spaces with whatever you want there. Yeah. So by this being, you know, more detailed, it's more specific, so it kind of maybe, like, muddles the the aesthetic a little bit of what you imagined, to, like, something like Super Metroid to look like. Um, but I th- it, it did kind of remind me of, Sh- of Shadow Complex in some spaces. Oh, but interesting. There are some freakier areas. Like there are, I was looking at the doors specifically just to be like, do you have to shoot the doors in order to, to go through them? And there are certain doors that are like almost weirdly control-esque where it's like just a series of like monolithic squares that you just run through. Yeah. Um, so that that is like interesting. And I'm curious to see if they lean more into that design. But then there are also like the kind of classic Chozo statues and some of the like areas do kind of look like that. But you are seeing a lot more of the like facility areas that you might end up looking at like in the latter half of like a metroid game uh yeah. so I'm, i mean I'm, other m took place entirely on a space station so oh interesting yeah, yeah. kyle apparently um, has other m at the top. wait didn't you just stream that like last year or something I played, a, I played metroid prime and other m well i replayed other m like what, a year or year and a half ago i played metroid prime through the first time fully streaming it like within the last year and a half oh, that's that was right. the first time i played and beaten prime one. Oh wow uh, but yeah, so because it's Mercury Steam and the same developer as Metroid 2, uh, it seems like, well, the remake of Metroid 2, it seems like they're pulling a lot of stuff from there. Like, okay, you're going to have, what is it, the the melee, the dash melee, all that stuff. Which is great. Super awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's weird that this is an exciting thing, but they're like, now you have free aim while you're running. Or it's like, oh yeah, it has been that long where now we have twin sticks for Metroid like compared to the 3DS, so that's going to be a novel, strange thing for the Metroid franchise. Uh, Let's see, there's a Phantom Cloak, so you can seem invisible for the enemies because it seems like stealth overall is going to be a strangely 
big thing here because you're trying to dodge those Emmys because it seems like it's insta-kill, right? Is the way they described it, if they touch you? Seems that way. Yeah. yeah, and I think you you have to kind of pick your uh, battles a little bit because I think you can only be invisible if you're still. I don't think you can move while you're invisible because they didn't show that in the trailer. So I'm guessing it is like a, okay, stand still and it will you know, won't kill you. you know? Gotcha. And then in the treehouse thing, they also said that there is an AI named Adam that you're going to be talking through or talking oh. to throughout the game and like uploading data and then he'll convey lore to you and stuff like that. So really it's curious. another what... other M thing. There's a character named Adam, like a very yeah. prominent character named Adam in other M. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I wonder <laughs> if that's his like deceased body and uh, Samus He's is like, like well, commander. I'll turn him into an AI and then he, he won't have to push me around anymore and tell me when I can use my upgrades. <laughs> That's yeah, so that was weird. Adam's role in other M is he would tell you when you could use the upgrades you already have. Oh, everybody in the backstage past is screaming it's the same as Fusion, that the AI from Fusion was also oh. called, called Adam. Oh, so that's carrying okay. forward from there. Okay. There we that's go. Uh, but it's out October 8th this year, everybody. A new wow. 2D Metroid game. And Oh, there's a special edition that they have that they're selling. Oh, really? What's it looks it, really cool. Yeah, it, it has like, like um, gosh, it has like an art book and maybe some like weird cards or something. Yeah, it's art cards, art book, and like a steelbook case. All right. Oh, I don't need any of that. I'm so excited. I'm definitely yeah. going to buy it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's a lot of it's collector's like items. Too. I love how them steel, those steelbooks just, like, stick out against the normal spines, too. Yeah. They're, like, so abrasive. <laughs> you want to make yourself look slightly weirder? Mm-hmm. Uh, steelbook. This is it, everybody. I feel like I've been beating this drum for a long time, but if you're in that camp of why don't they make more 2D Metroids... If this game doesn't sell, you all have to shut your freaking mouths for the rest of time. This is your chance, because you had a chance a couple years ago, and everyone's like, yeah, but it's on 3DS, I don't want to play it. Now's your last chance to support Metroid, everybody, if you want to play this thing in the future. Metroid Dread. Uh, let's see. Serial. We should hit on how they opened the show. Uh, the big new Smash character reveal. <laughs> How's the, uh, yeah, from uh, Tekken. It was weird. Yeah, like, I was not expecting that. I think that they are slowly building one of the better fighting game crossovers uh, among fighting games. I think the only person missing is Scorpion at this point. They can't that would be do the it. last big one. I can't imagine they will do that, but I would love I was, so much. I was about to ask you, why aren't you speaking with more confidence in the crossover element? Like, I can't think of anything that would even rival. Yeah, well, I mean, it's yeah, just like, it's one character yeah. from each franchise, but whatever. Like, yeah. it, that's, it is crossing over the most fighting game franchises. Uh, and that's, like, that's really cool. Like, like Kazuya is maybe one of the more boring characters, but it's, like, the one you're gonna pick. It's, like, Kazuya is the Ryu of Tekken. I'm almost intimidated by how many moves that character has. It's for, absurd! That went yeah, on for like, so long of them just doing, you can do this move, you can do this move. It's, like, that overwhelming move list from Tekken. They've just migrated that entire thing over to Smash. Yeah, I think this is definitely Bandai Namco saying, like, like, yeah, no, put our character in there. Because I think he is the least flashy character in terms of, like, widespread appeal where it's just like this guy just does like punches and kicks who cares uh and like if you see like what's his up b he just does like a kick or what it like he just does a move right like it's not like a you know fire comes out of my hands or like i do something crazy or cartoonish it is just like i but it, it for me it is like seeing oh he has the he has like what is effectively like a korean backdash which is what like a lot of people call like a, like a high level move in tekken where he you can evade and stuff uh he has like his electric godfish so a lot of that stuff is cool but not super flashy so i think he is probably one of the more like he almost doesn't fit smash brothers that well but like the fact that they're like, like his big thing uh because like smash brothers characters are getting more and more complex is that like yeah no we put all of his moves in there like all 120,000 moves of the, that a Tekken character has, we decided to put as many as we can in there. Yeah. By the way, stepping back, I fall for it every single time. That opening, I'm like, oh, they're showing a Zelda thing. This isn't Breath of the Wild. Because it's Ganondorf, like by a volcano. And it was Ganondorf, and then it zoomed out, and it, there was a moment where I was upset. I was mad about it, but then I was like, well, wait, hold on. I think if they're going to include this, then they're they're going to show something Zelda because that mm. would be too mean to put this here and not have something Zelda real at the end. But that him dropping characters into the volcano. So funny. I loved it. Hilarious. <laughs> I was watching with my kid. She was laughing her ass off. Like, it's so funny dropping Kirby in there and then he just floats off. It's so good. I, mean, just, I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm trying to think of any other series where the trailers, it seems like, have just consistently gotten better and better, better and funnier and funnier as, as they've gone on like yeah. Smash. I mean, 
since they've started the big character reveal trailers for like the Wii version, they've just gotten so freaking good. And yeah, the yeah. jump cuts of him throwing all of these characters into a volcano is the I, funniest yeah, thing. Yeah, I think <laughs> whether it's Sakurai or some underwriter, like whoever writes those trailers is one of the funniest people working in video games right now. <laughs> it, is, it is absurd how good those trailers are. And there's also that trailer, like someone, they like uh, I think Damco released a, 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 a key art where it's, it's Kazuya holding Ryu over the pit and all the Smash characters kind of being like, all right, we got to figure something out. And like Min Min is like kind of going in for the save, like undercover with her extended arms. Oh. And if you watch it, it's like the chronology of that is interesting because it's like, here's the art. And then the trailer is the result of that where Kazuya just beats all of them up and throws them into a volcano <laughs> one by one. And then uh, Min Min's uh, arm getting stuck on his foot. <laughs> yeah. Such a, that, that, I, I, I don't know that I'll play much Kazuya, but that trailer is excellent it's very good yeah uh another huge announcement for me here is that warrior wears finally come into the switch that was also kind of in that rough metroid territory like oh, i released one on the 3ds isn't that good enough for everybody but you can't go back to the 3ds after that switch releases but we're getting warrior wear get it together <laughs> which is a very good name for this game, uh, which the big push this time around is it's going to have two-player co-op. Uh, and Janet, you've never played a WarioWare game? No, and oh. I'll, I'll have to be honest with y'all, you know, out here. And I know it's upsetting. I, I understand that it's upsetting because it's like everyone says they're really good. Yep. But, you know, in the spirit of not just saying everyone says they're good, so I'm going to be like, yeah, like because I've never played it, so I'm not going to pretend like I did. What? What, what was I seeing there and why should I care as a newcomer to this? Mm -hmm. What was going that on there? Because let me just say this, like for those who and I know it's hard to go back to an era before you knew about WarioWare, but imagine not knowing WarioWare and seeing that yeah. you wouldn't get excited. I ain't nope. going, you know, I ain't trying to throw shade to it. I hear it's really good. Well what it's was funny, I Janet, because because <laughs> I actually very distinctly remember that period of not of looking at WarriorWare screenshots in Electronic Gaming Monthly and I think Game Informer and just being totally engaged and fascinated with what I was seeing because it was so disparate and weird. Like every screenshot looked looked like something completely different. Right. And like that's that's what I love about WarriorWare. Like as watching the new one with my kid was really fun because that was her reaction. She's like, "What is this? This is very strange." And I immediately pulled out my 3DS and charged it so that we could play the original warrior wear together like that that for me was like up there with like honestly 2d metroid in terms yeah. of like surprise game that i'm really excited about and looking forward to yeah. the confusion is part of the charm to kind of answer <laughs> okay. your question oh, yeah, am so, i not allowed to know what this is it's no okay, okay so the core of, of warrior wear <laughs> is you play you go into like basically like a session and you play what are called micro games which are like these mini games that take probably no more than five to ten seconds to play and it and in past games it's been like oh a car is coming at you jump when like when it's appropriate or whatever or like uh erase like part of this chalkboard and find like the right symbol or like here's a roll of toilet paper on the ds and you have to unroll the entire uh thing before the time runs out and Just you have absurd, like absurd very silly because yeah, the premise so yeah. the premise is that warrior the character realizes that he likes money and coins, which I think you probably gathered from other classic warrior appearances. And you realized, you know what a good way is to make money? These stupid freaking video games. So I'm going to churn out hundreds of just crappy tiny video oh, so he's games. He's like a developer? Yes. Like, is that what's yes. going on here? Yeah. That's what I was yep. seeing? Okay. That's what you're seeing. So these are all games that Wario and his team have developed. Yeah. And then it's just micro games. I can't believe he makes them all show up in office during this era. He's a <laughs> cruel, cruel, Wario, cruel so man. And then also, it just gets faster we, and faster. Can we acknowledge that Wario, you know, like the voice actor, the character, whatever, said like a lot of full on sentences. I was not ready to hear Wario <laughs> saying anything more than, Wah, you know, or some, you know, you know how he goes. Right? Totally. It's like, like for him just saying, what was that? It's jarring, yeah, but it was, scary. it's like WarioWare Gold, I think was also one where they had a lot of cutscenes, And that was like him monologuing for a Kojima-esque cutscene. It's like, what is yeah. this new era of I mean, Wario? Yeah, it was weird when he said, uh, it's a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like I, I think one thing that I think might get Janet hype about about WarioWare is like the highlight up for a lot of people is always the nine volt stuff, yeah, which is all like retro like games where it's just like here's a mini game where you're like trying to kill three Octorox in a Zelda dungeon, or like you know like jump over a thing in Mario. It's like five second versions of a bunch of different uh, 
Nintendo games. And I think part of it is that like that seems like pretty rife uh, with like for cool, like here's a Splatoon mini game where you play Splatoon for a second. You have to clear out a, a bunch of paint. Uh, so like those are always some of the coolest stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it is a lot of like you're just kind of trying not to fail at these games for a while. Um, but yeah, like these are really cool games. I think maybe some of the novelty is maybe worn off in the intervening years because it, it was like kind of Nintendo's first big like, oh, I like they're going back to their old franchises and they're like, right. here's like here's a retro game on a modern system for the first time or like here's a really weird aesthetic. Um, but like, yeah, I think this is going to be really cool. But if I, I think I'm very curious to see what your ultimate reaction is to one of these new games, because I feel like I wonder at, at this point if there is nostalgia for the thing that was based partially in nostalgia now of like we're all really nostalgic for WarioWare. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, September 10th is when that's coming out. I'll let y'all know. Please, please I'll let us know. I'm gonna see what's up. Please. I really, I genuinely hope you try it. It's kind of like, almost like a TikTok video game or something, where it's just like, we're trying to relate to the kids, Kyle. And the, the co-op stuff I think will be interesting. I, uh, I'm very curious to see how many, like, if there's online for it, or if there are co-op exclusive games. Um, yeah. But that, I could totally see that being a, a, just a blast with like, if you have a partner or like a like family or friends or whatever, just bring them over and just also, let them in on the it? season. Is there like yeah, yeah. Like, an end? like you're, you're kind of unlocking just, all yeah. the games, so like okay. you'll go into a session like every kind of there's like uh, distinct kind of characters, right? And so you'll go into like here's the Annie section, and they're all supposed to be like Halloween uh, based and spooky. Like the nine book section is Ashley. all retro <laughs> stuff. Oh, Ashley, sorry. please show her respect. Um, there's like Cat and Nina. A kit cat. There, uh, I think there's like two ninjas or what? Two like yep. uh, t- girl ninjas. And so you're unlocking the games, and eventually you can play any of the games distinctly. Or there will be like remix areas where it's like we're combining all the different sections. And I think that one of those is like we're making them really fast. We're making them really hard. And then this is like the finale where you're playing a bunch of them uh, for like the end game. The weird thing this time yeah. around is they said it was because of that two-player co-op you needed to like see who was on the screen so you're actually playing as Wario or like the WarioWare cast of characters on the screen where normally it's like here's a random game where I guess you're controlling this cat's eyelids or you're controlling like you're holding tweezers to pull out nose hair right or like you know? you're controlling this bird that has to hover real quick while the earth shakes and so it's weird that now all of that's Wario and those characters I feel like it removes it's a little bit of that maybe. randomness charm but uh, I'm curious yeah. to see how it actually works out there. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, okay. Uh, real quick. Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Uh, technically announced at the Ubisoft conference or leaked a little bit before. But they're making a new tactics game. Uh, it looks great. It's, it's cool to see. Their angle for the sequel is that it's basically Mario and Rabbids with more of a galaxy bent. They even have like some music from Galaxy. There's the Rabbids Rosalina. And then they have... Sparks, which are the fusion of Rabbids and Luma from Super Mario Galaxy. So that's bizarre. Yeah. Did they add any new like mechanics or like is there anything new to the strategy layer of it that you guys saw? The free roam. Yeah. The, uh, okay. Instead of it being grid based, it seems like it has like you get an area of attack like that you can choose to be in any spot of that, which people suspected when we first saw it at Ubisoft. But it would now it was them like doing VO and being like, yes, this is how it how it is. So I like that they did add a little bit of contextualization, which we didn't get when we saw it at Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah. Are you excited for that, Jenna? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mario plus Rabbids is like such a good game, and it's it's lovely in that it falls into that area of a lot of people, myself included, were like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I, I didn't like the Rabbids as characters, so I'm like, I'm not going to spend time with this, but everyone's like, no, trust me. And then you do, and it turns out great. Um, yeah. I love when those moments happen. And it's on, uh, I, I saw Wario 64 had treat, tweeted out, it's on sale right now for $9.99 on the USD yeah. shop. So I think mm. absolutely get that if you haven't already. Because yeah. one, uh, it's an amazing game. And two, um, it'll be a great, I think, test for whether or not you would want the other one. Because I, I imagine they're going to still play pretty summarily. So if you don't like this one, it can, it's kind of a nice way to, hey, only invest $10, check it out now. And then if you're into it, get the next one when it comes yeah. out. I was literally about to ask you that because like the first time I played Mario and Rabbids was on a flight where I lost my switch. So I, I have about two hours into that game and I was thinking I was going to ask you guys, like, is it worth going back to that game? But it seems like for ten dollars. Yeah, you probably should. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, OK, Kyle. Skyward Sword HD. That was shown. Coming That's out. Right. 
coming out July sixteenth. Still, I I'm a defender of that game. I'm curious to see the yeah, new kind of. Yeah, I I think it gets a bad rap for being like the worst Zelda, and I don't think that's the case. Yeah, no. But I I definitely see like the what complaint. is the worst Zelda? Uh, probably either Spirit Tracks or Zelda Two, but uh, Spirit yeah. Tracks. Yeah. Yeah, but like I think. I, I totally get the complaints in terms of like the big scope 3D Zeldas. I think it's probably the one I'm least interested in replaying because sure. I think the bad parts of it are kind of hard to get over. But I think it I, I will say that I think it has my favorite dungeon designs in the series. I think those like outside inside dungeons are amazing. Yes. Uh, and the last dungeon is incredible. Um, and I think I think for that alone, I think it's worth going back to. I'm um, just curious to see what the discourse yeah. will be like when it comes out. But that's not all. We also got a game and watch in honor of the 35th anniversary yeah. for the legend of Zelda. And this comes with, it's like the little portable thing. They had it. I think we showed it off on this podcast, even for the Mario edition, but this comes with Zelda one, Zelda two links awakening on there, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. There we go. Janet has it right now. Yeah. For the Mario so one. That's the awesome. Mario one. Yeah. The Zelda yeah. one's totally different. <laughs> different games. It kind of is. It the comes clock with looks different. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to get ever- it though, but I'm, I'm going to be I'll that idiot. That I'm excited for that yeah. one. Yeah. I, I, they should have just announced it. Like, you know, Pre-order anxiety coming 20, 20, like 2021 because it's like it's just going to be one of those things where Wario 64 is going to have a thing and it's going to sell out immediately. And I'm just going to be like, damn it, I was literally doing anything else. I needed to drop everything and pre-order this thing. Yeah. Because uh, Nintendo is very bad about releasing physical products. But yeah, I wish uh, there was a proper Zelda thing. anniversary thing. Like there wasn't really everyone's been talking about how like it's weird. There's not in a, a, a verbal or like firm acknowledgement of like the Zelda anniversary. But there is stuff like I think. Having like this game and watch thing before you know Zelda games is kind of that. I don't know why they won't just say it. <laughs> like I don't know, it's kind of weird. It's an odd. Th- I mean, they put out a tweet I think that day, but that was kind of yeah. it. There were a lot of rumors uh, about you know they're them re-releasing Wind Waker and uh, Twilight Princess, but I guess I've, either they're holding off on like having a firm release date for Breath of the Wild two uh, versus where, like and then maybe scheduling this out in between then, but. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I was definitely expecting more from the Zelda section in terms of like number of announcements. But I'm hoping they maybe have something late by the end of the year. Who knows? Yeah. But the big thing then is they had a big section for the game that refuses to be named. They're still calling it the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild the sequel. sequel to the Legend of Zelda Breath sequel. of the Wild. The sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Or and Wii can, U. There we go. That's your name. They confirmed that it's coming out in 2022, so not this year. And they say development steadily progressing. Kyle Hilliard is the world's number one Zelda fan. Give me your reaction. Give me your gut take on the new trailer. Uh, there's a lot of... It looks great. I mean, just to get that out of the way first, like, fantastic. Like, super exciting. It was one of those, it's like those moments that I love during E3 and just watching directs or whatever, where it's like I'm watching something on screen and just trying to absorb every little thing as it's happening live. I'm like, my God, Link's hair looks incredible. Wait, it's short in this part, but it's long in this part. He's wearing completely different clothing. What is up with his arm? What is wrong with his arm? Why is this part in reverse? Why is that that drop of water going upward? Wait, did he jump up through the ground? (laughs) Oh, wait, he can reverse time? with a new yeah. thing like like it's and it's this just is our Elden that, Ring trailer yeah I've I've rewatched it multiple times I've already pulled it into Premiere and reversed parts of it and like I I, I and it's also the big thing for me is like we I joked right when we started Hanson that I'm like not feeling great about our title predictions because I was very <laughs> focused on like underground you know I we're know. gonna lift up the castle we're gonna go underneath Hyrule and it was like nah just kidding we're going like up in the sky it's, it's a complete the opposite greatest of what you think. and it's it's, it's so obvious in retrospect. It's so good of a bait and switch to have that opening trailer be all underground and everyone was all in on like, okay, it's going to be dark dungeons. And even stupid old me was like, I don't know, dark dungeons. That's not what I want from Zelda. I want the big free exploration bright. And it turns out that that first trailer is just kind of, you know, the the catalyst for these changes theoretically in Hyrule and sending the castle into the sky and maybe shaking up the entire environment and psych it's not all going to be underground it's all going to be above ground you idiots and also to kind of wrap it back to skyward sword a little bit it looks like it is going to take what is the most i don't know maybe not the most but one of the like very interesting facets of skyward sword they couldn't really pull off with the tech but like the idea was very cool is like leaping from the sky and going down to the ground and exploring the ground and then making your way back up to the sky and then like 
you know, they have that shot of Link just falling from a huge height, just skydiving. Amazing. And it's like, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I love the idea of like that Skyward Sword idea of like moving between upstairs and downstairs, but like doing it in real time with that Breath of the Wild level of exploration, like yeah. just a ton of stuff to get excited about. Like, yeah, that hair, it, that hair it, looks it, so good. Okay, I, 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 yeah. I, I did eventually think of like that uh skyward sword trailer from earlier where they were like hey all that stuff you liked about breath of the wild was in skyward sword i feel like they have a chip on their shoulder about skyward sword and saying like all those all those things we thought of were super cool like (laughs) we're gonna make you like them we're gonna put it in the game you like we're gonna remind you sky yeah we're gonna release it whether you like it or not Skyward Sword was cool. That's my hot take. I'm AG Onuma. <laughs> <laughs> I would love if he just went on like a really extreme rant about that. Can you imagine? He just went on this Twitter and said, unpopular now. opinion, Skyward Sword is the best one. He's like, y'all have been sleeping on this guy for a minute and I'm tired of it. Like, <laughs> yeah, if I have to make, make a whole new game. Which oh, I'm that, totally that's into. That's what Zelda was telling you in the beginning of Breath of the Wild. Wake up. You've been sleeping on Skyward Sword. <laughs> right. Wake up, yes. people. <laughs> uh, but I'm totally into it. Like, as I mentioned in our deepest dive for Chrono Trigger uh, all the way back, I'm really a sucker for cities in the sky, mm, yeah. uh, castles oh, sure, even. Sure. Uh, but like, so I like seeing that. So I guess there's a good chance that those become the new shrines where it's just like isolated islands oh, where you're solving puzzles and stuff. Um, I went back and watched the trailer and I saw that I don't think they're doing a ton of like terraforming with the landmass because even in that trailer, there were shots of like the um, the the Toyasha shrine which is like where you see all those mushrooming looking cl- uh rocks there's like the castle prison graveyard thing you like you can see those identifiable landmarks really so okay it's not like oh yeah we're just we're all these all of these locations are new but i can uh i can totally see them saying like if you go back to these areas there there will be new stuff there it, yeah am i got that sense am yeah. i reading it correctly that it's like areas of hyrule have lifted up into the sky or were are these things descending down like what is going Any on? Question. Well, I mean, the castle is going on. There's right? just a sky, it's like the sky has a whole new thing going on. So like it, for the most part, that's that's how I that that's the vibe I got. So it just kind of like the Earth rotated, and then it turns out in this part of the <laughs> Earth in the, I mean, in the think, off yeah, seasons. I think I think the conceit, I think the story conceit, <laughs> Hanson, will be that land masses are rising in the air. Yeah, but I think the gameplay thing is that they are going to be all new. And it won't really make sense, and that's totally. I think that's okay a good point. Yeah, it, that makes sense. An opportunity yeah. to explore new places. Going on our theme, though, the other thing they could do is to say, you know, what area is super mysterious and cool, and like here's a throwback to Skyloft, like in the same way that Wind Waker was about rediscovering Hyrule from Ocarina. Right. This could be like rediscovering Skyloft from uh from the like th- this being the last game in the timeline, rediscovering the landmass from the first Zelda timeline. Oh, well, wise. that's true. Surreal. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt your feelings i guess or take the wind out of your sailcloth but like you can find like uh skyloft like in breath of the wild or elements of it like the big statue that you leap from and stuff like that it's in breath so maybe that's one part that's one island though there are lots of (laughs) islands up there so wait so that means that skyloft went back up she's putting herself back together going up into the sky skyloft is returning to the sky is the story of this game (laughs) Oh, cool. weird. Okay, so the idea is there used to be floating islands in this planet. I not, look, we already talked about this a little bit. It makes yeah. no sense. And they all came crashing down, but now they're being pushed back up. That's kind of what we're dealing with for the, the larger Zelda timeline. And the, I mean, it's, it's, it's all because of the, all of the Majora's down, Mask yeah. moon is lifting them up like the tides. You know, it's like the gravity, the pull I of see. the moon. I'm just because this, this game crosses over all the Zeldas, right? You can find Majora's Mask in there. So it's like, who knows? We're just leaving it all on the table now. And what's with the arm? What is with the arm? Uh, so the, it the got thing, like infected by like the calamity juice, well, right? The like the little red, because like the it opens with like that red like gunk fog. Symbiote. I don't know the canonical phrase for that. No, gunk y'all fog know what I'm talking right. about. Yeah. That, that red fog. mist. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. weird thing though um, is don't that touch it. You're don't, not supposed to touch it. Apparently, no. no. It's like when Neo touches the mirror in the Matrix. But the weird thing is that was teased in flashes in that original trailer for the sequel because Kyle and I just rewatched it 3,000 times but it's all green and like it shows it's like green kind of like taking over Link's arm in that trailer from a couple years ago and then this one I don't know if they just changed the aesthetic to go from green to red or it starts out green then turns red but then even when Link uses like the 
reverse time, jump okay. up to the sky loft, ripple through the ground. Then it looks green again. So I don't know exactly what's so happening. So what if this was like an eco situation, right? Jack and Daxa people, you know what I'm talking about? Where like the dark eco is different and then like you can harness the light mm. because maybe there's something going on with that because it does seem like he, I don't know if infected is the right word, but like some, some stuff went on his arm and now his arm is different. I feel like those two things are related. You don't just stick your arm in that weird calamity juice and come out yeah. okay like something's well, going on there and i think it could maybe like change but maybe the color change has to do with like the properties of it or the abilities yeah yeah, yeah. the original teaser does it, it heavily imply that there is like a severed arm that you know what i mean like the arm is separated on ganon's oh, chest man. so i don't I, know if it's like an oh, infection so much it, as it's a, a physical he got like a new arm yeah. this is like want, his yeah. is it again is it like a metal gear situation where you yeah. like have remnants of ganon's arm, arm we're looking at on here. you could be and, and that's like uh, yeah, and I saw that trailer. I think the the kind of power stuff I think is kind like the the shot with the like the giant spike ball. I think it's just kind of like your new power is see like you can push objects. Uh, and I think that was just like here's the path that, that this ball is going to take if you shoot it this way. Versus, I thought it was like multiple balls or something. I think it is just kind of like we retooled stasis a little bit to maybe make made it less broken well, or whatever. And I just, thought you were rewinding time on that object. I think that's what's going on. Path. Okay, but yeah. I mean that's this is all just speculation. I mean to know? add to the systemic gameplay of Breath of the Wild, this idea of rewinding time for objects like that seems like a huge component here, right? Yeah. And I think it could be a really cool version of that because most like most times where you have any of that kind of stuff, it feels very binary of like, here is the like the unsolved state and then you rewind it or forward it. And here's the solved state. But I think if you mix it even with like just collectibles of like, oh, you notice this tree's kind of weird and it's not like an explicit puzzle. It's just like a thing that if you find this tree in the wild, like you get a Korok seed or something like think I think that could be like that mixed with Zelda's kind of systemic, you know, exploration stuff, I think could be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, on the superficial side of things, what is up with his hair? It's changing throughout the game. Do you think it's customizable? And more importantly, they didn't show his mm. face. Do you think they're going to rotate the camera and he's going to have a big old link beard? Because he's all weird and haggardy now? There's concept art of him with a beard. The concept art of him missing his arm. Uh, I think he, he has a little bit of a beard. You're going to have to find him in a fishing that. village playing Fortnite. Wait, what concept art about him missing I did an arm? I think of him dropping in when I saw him. When totally. they first showed the thing, I absolutely thought of like, and then there's like 98 other links and you just go at it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I love the hair though. It's awesome. Wait, wait Kyle, uh, what, what concept art is that with the missing arm? There's a bunch. I mean, in that huge sort of database of concept art that shows like the Minish and the motorcycle link there is one where he doesn't have an arm um oh, that looks interesting. very dark yeah uh, so there might be shows him in like that. a cave like a rainy cave and he does not have an arm yeah okay. so i think it, this is one of those things i think it's a concept they had previously that they're able to bring forward for the sequel you know yeah whatever it is i don't know what it is but they, they've been thinking about it since before they were you know before breath of the wild released so we see the continuation of the tease from the last trailer where before we saw Zelda start to fall and then it looked like somebody caught her in the last trailer. But in this one, it shows her falling all the way down that dark pit itself uh, as a big homage to Smash Brothers. Um, what are the odds now that when you theoretically play as Zelda, you're going to be playing as her in this dark underworld area, or is it just she's lost in the underworld and now you're Link trying to rescue her and she's just trapped on there forever? I, I think it's the latter, yeah. kind of, in a sort of somewhat disappointed way. I don't think they would want to make a, a Zelda game, a Breath of the Wild game specifically, where you would ever not be exploring on your own volition. You know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. think they would ever say, okay, this sequence... There's a self-contained area where you're kind of another character with yeah. a separate inventory kind of thing. Yeah, like a Mary Jane and Spider-Man kind of situation. Yes, I don't exactly. think they would ever do that with the player in a Breath of the Wild. I'm not saying I wouldn't want it. I think it would be really cool to kind of see what Zelda's doing. That's something I love about Skyward Sword is at the end, you get to see what Zelda was doing the whole time during the credits when Link was chasing after her, which I think is really cool. Yeah. But I, I, I don't think so. I don't think that'll happen. I bet, I bet that's DLC. Yeah. Uh, did they... Okay, so just to talk about kind of like more systemic stuff, did they... They, I don't think they showed him actually fighting anybody, right? So they, like, they, hmm. were, they seemed like it was. They were hesitant Question. to say, like, "Oh, here's how we've uh, changed or kept the 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 weapon breakage system." It didn't seem like there was a ton of like dungeon stuff. So who knows what the shrines are going to look like? Whether the game will have, because like, the, I don't think you can do go back to the divine beast stuff. Uh, so I wonder how they're if they're going to have larger dungeons. Maybe that's how Zelda does it, like, or that's how you play Zelda is like you play self contained dungeons that are kind of more elaborate than the stuff you find in the overworld. Um, but I'm very curious to see how, like, I'm 
I want to learn more about like here's how here's sort of like the patch notes for like this game versus the last game of like what they chose to address and what they're like continuing to lean, lean in on. Yeah, no real hints about any of that stuff. I mean, maybe yeah. people will still be unpacking the trailer to find a little bit more here and there, but you get to see like the the enemies on top of the rock guy and it's like a <laughs> village on top of the rock guy that's like a big There's like hero a snake, shot. kind of fiery snakey thing that he's fighting. Yeah, I'm scrubbing through now to see if there was combat and yeah, you're like right, Cyril. 45 seconds. Yeah. yeah, he like shoots fire. They show right? him like, he has like a fire weapon like on it looks like a dragon head on his arm that shoots yeah. fire but that's like the closest thing they've shown to like a attack or something you know that's really bizarre what um what was your take and please tell us exactly what this means professor hilliard um uh, the zelda's lullaby that was zelda's lullaby at the end right when it's like that wide shot of the castle uh, oh you know actually i don't i don't have an answer for that i'm not sure it was, it was a weird musical choice so. like it We're seems doing... like they're hinting at See, something I, i'm gonna go back and listen to it again I mean, the other big thing with this is a lot of people on Reddit were trying to piece together like, this looks too good for a Switch. This is Switch Pro footage. Oh, like, um, the hair yeah, rustling, the, the grass, the Switch Pro is real, I'm, Janet, it's real. I'm over the grand conspiracies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Like, I ain't seen nothing that looked more than what I have already seen before. And also, I don't, the Switch, is, the Switch Pro isn't even rumored to, I think, be so powerful that it's like a crazy leap. Yeah. It's just kind of nice. Like, just a little bit nicer. Yeah. Right. Um, it always looks good in a trailer. It's a trailer. If it ain't going bad in the trailer because we have other problems. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, a, a bigger clue, like, if, if I were the, like, that kind of conspiracy theorist, a bigger clue might have been that, like, they're porting a few titles that don't feel like they would fit on a Switch, like something like uh, Doom Eternal or uh, uh, Dragon Ball Kakarot, right? Like, right. things that don't That's necessarily so feel like they would run super great on a Switch. And Guardians um, of the Galaxy apparently is going to be a, yeah yeah that's going to be like a cloud streaming game again. So still some questions there. A lot of things to to mop up and questions lingering from E3 2021. We'll get to some of those on the next main episode of the MinMax Show podcast, which will be back on the regular schedule. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed uh, our bonus episodes for E3. We have Leo Vader and Jeff Cork's big E3 recap video coming up on Wednesday evening here on our YouTube channel, so you can check that out. We always appreciate it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel to see all those reaction videos, bonus videos, uh, the big E3 recap, all that fun stuff. So any help spreading the word about MinMax and what we're doing here is appreciated. Also, as a reminder, we have Trivia Tower, our huge episode of Trivia Tower happening on June 20th. That is Sunday at 1 p.m. Central. If you support us at any tier on Patreon, you can compete in Trivia Tower, the grand round. Round, round. Round, round, and win $1,000. All right, so please look forward to that. Uh, that's coming up on Sunday. All right, <laughs> and we should thank everybody who supports us at the $50 tier over there on Patreon. I'm talking, of course, about Alex Payne, Fixture Gaming, I Am 8-Bit, Best of the Rest Podcast, Call Me By Your Game Podcast, Mercurico Torreno, Real AFTV, Zachary Pliggy, Mark Seliga, Beaten Down Brian, Ludwig Roque, Juar Hello, PrettyGoodPrinting.com, Andrew Yukowitz, Andrew Valla, John Higby, Yarrow, Richard Smuts, Clint Farley, Spiral In Your Eyes, Pritham Yar Legata, Starkiller, Spider Dan, Purebred Number 6, Slick Nick, Jesse Bam Dad, and Jesse Vitelli. Thank you so much, everybody, for supporting us at that $50 tier. We appreciate the support, and we look forward to seeing a lot of you competing in Trivia Tower this Sunday. Thanks so much, everybody. Be good, have fun, let's go! Let's go!